The Bike Riders, yeah. Sorry this review's about a week or so late. Better late than never. I was on vacation. I finally got a chance to check it out today. This movie was supposed to come out in December of last year, but due to what I perceived to be the strikes that were going on in Hollywood last year, they delayed it to this summer. We finally got a chance to check it out here. This was written and directed by Jeff Nichols, who brought you Mud, a movie that not really a lot of people talk about much anymore, but great movie that is so grounded in realism. And you have a really talented cast to boot. Jodie Comer, Austin Butler, and Tom Hardy anchor the charge. And this movie takes place over the course of a decade where we see a midwestern motorcycle club known as the vandals evolving from a gathering place for local outsiders to a sinister gang which threatens the original group's way of life and we basically see how each member of the gang navigates their way through this change you see how the leader played by tom hardy is absolutely threatened by this new invading force you see a bunch of colorful characters like michael shannon integrating himself into the group but it feels like at the crux of it all is a couple played by austin butler Butler and Jody Comer. Now I know a lot of people might look at this poster and they see Austin Butler, former Oscar nominee for Elvis, written all over it, and they might think he's the main character. I would liken the bike rider's blueprint similar to what the last duel was a couple years ago, also starring Jody Comer. She is the heart and soul of what makes the bike riders work. She is so freaking damn good in this movie, guys. Jody Comer continues to prove why she is an up-and-coming force in Hollywood. I said it time in and time I'm out when I saw her in movies like The Last Duel, like Free Guy. This is a talented, talented actress, and she continues to prove it here. A lot of people might say that her accent might be a little bit distracting, but I never really felt that. It felt natural to me. You know what felt supernatural to me is freaking Austin Butler. This character that he plays here, super stone cold, not a lot of lines of dialogue, does a lot of eye acting, a lot of eye movements, and you can just sense that there is something going on with this guy. The passion that he has for riding alongside his friends is second to none. He loves it. And if one thing threatens it, he will absolutely break down. And that's another thing, man. This movie will hit you right in the emotional feels. The male characters in this movie are super hardened, but deep down, like, they're allowed to feel stuff, and that's super, super realistic. Tom Hardy in this movie as well. I'm so glad that this recent release is going to offset whatever Venom is, which I never said that Tom Hardy was bad in any Venom movie. I just don't like those. I'm glad that he has this movie to his credit now, and he's sort of getting his career back on the right track. Honestly, it wouldn't be too far-fetched to say that Tom Hardy is nominated for Best Supporting Actor at the Oscars because of this performance. Really freaking good. I actually think he might have been my favorite. Everybody was great. Michael Shannon, really freaking great in this movie. Mike Face, who you might remember from Challengers recently, he does really well. Norman Reedus, Daryl Dixon himself, has a smaller role in this movie, almost unrecognizable, and he does really well. Like, I wouldn't say in terms of the talent, there's one weak link that holds this movie back. Everybody's on it. And Jeff Nichols as a writer and director is on it. This is a guy who, again, like Mud, he gives you a super grounded movie. Don't go into the bike riders expecting some big summer action extravaganza. This is a very serious, slow-paced crime drama. Looking at the bike riders almost feels like you're looking at a time capsule of movie history. Because as soon as the movie starts, once the opening scene is completed, it's easy to recognize that this was shot on film, and it looks phenomenal on the big screen. It just feels like because of the cinematography and the whole aesthetic of the bike riders, this feels like a lost relic of this year. And a lot like Mud, I was super invested in what these characters were doing. I was super invested in where these characters were going to go. I was hoping that a lot of these characters would survive, which obviously I'm not going to get too deep into spoilers on this matter. But man, Bike Riders was really good. I was very pleased with this movie overall. Super well put together presentation. The performances are all great. The music choices are also magnificent. It really puts you in that late 60s, early 70s time period. My only real big issue with the Bike Riders, and it's unfortunately a pretty glaring issue that holds the Bike Riders back from being an instant classic for me, the writing. Not to say that the writing of any of these characters is at all bad, because like I said, very realistic characters. But this movie almost wants to be told in like a non-linear format. It establishes that Jodie Comer is your narrator who's telling the story of how she met Austin Butler's character and how they sort of became a married couple and an item in their own right. That is well established and she's telling this story to a reporter. But then it's like once the first act is over... 
the movie gives up on the narration. And you don't really see much narration ever again until like the final five minutes. And unfortunately, with the way this movie was structured, I was losing the timeline a little bit. I was kind of like, it took me a few seconds to really recognize where we were chronologically. And honestly, I don't have a problem with narration at all. I love narration in movies, but if you're going to use it, my advice would be to go all out. And I don't think the bike riders really did that or didn't really have a lot of creative things to do with narration. Imagine if you're watching Forrest Gump and he's telling this story on the bus stop bench to the lady who's sitting next to him and you only get about 30 minutes of storytelling. You just zip right through all of Forrest Gump's life accomplishments and the events that he experiences. And yeah, you're just right to his plotline with Jenny and his son. Yeah, that would be kind of inconsistent, huh? And I recognize that a lot of people felt the slow pace of the two-hour runtime. And yes, this is a very slow burn movie. That's not necessarily my problem, though. I think in a sense, the pacing issues with the bike riders isn't so much that it's slow but super inconsistent. And honestly, it's frustrating that I have to say that because that's the big glaring thing that's holding the bike riders back. I really enjoyed this movie overall. I thought all the performances were great. Some of these scenes that you get between our leading actors are just, gosh, so damn good. Acting powerhouses. I honestly think if you tighten up the screws on these scrap pieces of script, you have a much cleaner and lush feeling movie. But as it sits, it's a really well put together presentation. No real problems with the cinema cinematography or the technicals of the movie the costumes freaking awesome and yeah nothing really beats here in those motorcycles on big speakers in an auditorium and i found myself really digging this movie for the most part i will warn you though if you do choose to go and see the bike riders don't expect a big action movie. Go in expecting a crime drama and you'll probably enjoy the bike riders a lot more. I'm gonna give the bike riders a B plus. A movie that feels more like The Outsiders than Mad Max. But the best I can say about it is I think it's a lost relic. But let me know what you think of the bike riders down in the comments section below. Let me know also what your favorite crime drama is. I love discussing all new things in the cinematic world over here on the regular. If you've stumbled upon this channel for the first time, if you've drifted into the this video somehow do consider subscribing today tap on that thumbs up as well we're playing a game of catch up here as we start the second half of 2024 just getting back from a lovely vacation that i just had we're gearing up for a huge month of july over here with twisters and deadpool and wolverine both releasing by the end of the month I am so hyped to see both of those. I hope you guys are as hyped as I am. Thank you again so much for tuning in. Y'all are the best. With all that being said, Back Talk commence. Yeah.